The theory behind stock write downs is we're writing stock down to either the lower of cost or net realizable value. So if the cost of something was 50, but the net realizable value was 38, that was called a stock write down of 12. So why did we do that? Well, it was an expense and what we said was we're gonna put it here with stock losses. So basically what we're doing is recognizing an expense. So what theory tells us to do that? Well, one theory is conservatism. It says use caution when preparing financial reports. And that basically for us meant recognize a loss when expected. This part about gains, we're not even gonna use that. That's actually not something we need to talk about when we're talking about stock uh, write downs because we don't have a gain, we've got the opposite. So when we do our uh, definition of conservatism, when we're answering this question, we don't wanna say anything about gains. This is all to do with recognizing an expected loss. However, we need to sort of flush out our answer a little bit and make it a little bit more detailed. Why are we doing this? Well, conservatism has this second part of the definition. We be conservative so we never overstate assets or revenues and we never understate liabilities or expenses. Well, what we're doing here with a stock write down is we're making sure an asset called stock is not too high. And we're also making sure our expenses are not too low because we're recognizing a new expense called stock write down. So that's all to do with conservatism. So I guess what we're saying is we've got an expected loss when we think stock can only be sold for less than its cost. Hence, we need a stock write down. So our assets aren't overstated called stock control. Our expenses aren't understated called stock write down and our overall net profit isn't overstated. So applying a stock write down expense is going to be very, very conservative. What else might tell us to do a stock write down? So conservatism was a principle of accounting. What about a qualitative characteristic? Well, we could use relevance. Information is relevant if it um, influences our decision making, so it should be included. Um, and that's all about can we evaluate future decisions or past decisions or can we confirm or correct them and so on. So if we've got a stock write down, that's got to be recorded because it is going to affect our decision making. When you think about it, what we paid for stock in the past is relevant if I have to sell it for less than that. So if I kept it at the old price, my assets and my profit would be incorrect if I didn't record a stock write down. So I guess what I'm going to do is record a stock write down to make sure my balance sheet's correct. And by that I mean my assets, my stock will be less than is actually shown and therefore my owner's equity will be less than what I've got. In the income statement, my expenses are gonna be wrong. If I don't record a stock write down, my expenses need to be higher than what I've actually reported. Therefore, my net profit it actually is less than I've reported because I haven't recorded a stock write down. So together, I'm gonna to make really bad decisions based on this balance sheet and income statement if I don't have a stock write down in it. So there's some theory though that actually says, no, do not record a stock write down. If the net realizable value falls below the cost, doesn't matter, keep it at its cost. The historical cost principle says, always value transactions at their original purchase price and we value in the reports at the historical cost. So that totally contradicts what we just said. But reliability also says, uh, keep things free of estimates with a verifiable document Net realizable value totally breaches that because we are making an estimate on the selling price. How do I know what I can sell it for? Well, it's always going to be a guess. So doing this is not going to be any real documentation to verify the net realizable value amount. It's just my opinion. So together, they both contradict recording stock write down. So what we're left with is conservatism and relevance say we should write stock down to the lower of cost and net realizable value. But historical cost and reliability say, no, don't write them down. Always keep them at the original cost. So which um, theory applies? Which one are we going to use? Well, we're going to ignore the ones on the right and we're going to apply conservatism and relevance and always write stock down when its net realizable value is lower than its cost. So how do real companies do this? Well, they apply the same thing. This is from Myers annual report. At the end of the reporting period, all of inventory is valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value. So this is a real world thing. JB Hi-Fi does the same. Bonds does the same. So because that's a real thing in the real world, it's not like something that's, uh, so if you took in this case, say uh, Maya, 
they're going to write down things that to the lower of cost and net realizable value or well, what sort of things it could be swimwear during winter or coats during summer or it could be last year's um, iPhone now that a new one's been come out so this is a real world thing and therefore we're always going to apply conservatism and relevance and forget the historical cost and reliability